patient has a mid-shaft femur break. So we're going to take care of that with a hair traction splint. So I got my VSI on, my partner has her VSI on, and I'm going to go ahead and ask her to take manual stabilization. And my job is to check the pulse, motor, and sensory function. So I'm looking for the pulse. Do you know which toe I have? Big toe. And can you wiggle your toes for me? Excellent. So I'm going to take over the manual stabilization and she's going to move to the manual traction. Let me know when you're good. I'm good. Okay. So I can let go. I want to take my device here and measure it against the good leg because the injured leg will be a little shorter than it should be. Make sure I'm not going to go over the knee with the straps and that I'm not going to go over the brake. I want to make sure it extends a couple inches beyond the foot and it looks like we're already set. So we can go ahead and lift the leg up ever so slightly. Okay. You always want to attach the ischial strap first. And next is the ankle hitch. Now the patient should feel relief and my partner can go ahead and let go. Above the knee. And this will be above the fracture. Okay, so now that I have the splint all set up, got my straps on, I'm going to go ahead and check the pulse, motor, and sensory again. Checking the pulse. Which toe do I have? Little toe. And can you wiggle your toes for me? Okay. So during transport, I want to make sure that I put the patient on a backboard. It's important that the hips are secure and that the traction device is also secure to the backboard. This is a Sager traction splint. Now, the nice thing about the splint is if your patient has two mid-shaft femur breaks, you only need one of these, as opposed to using two hair traction splints. Now, the way this is applied is this end goes right in between the legs, and it's going to be uncomfortable for any patient that you have. You attach the ischial strap, you attach the ankle hitch, and you notice that we have two of these, and you can use both depending on your patient's injuries. Now, for the Sager splint, there is just a little bit of math you have to do. 
you want to pull about 10% of the patient's weight and you never want to exceed 15 pounds. So as soon as you figure out how much you're gonna pull, you can start pulling. And the handle will start moving up a scale here. You have pounds on one side and kilograms on the other. As soon as the handle reaches the point that you want to stop, all you have to do is stop pulling traction. Now with the Sager splint, regardless of whether you have one mid-shaft femur break or two mid-shaft femur breaks, you always want to splint the two legs together. And you can use cravats or anything that will splint the two legs together. And that's a Sager splint. Ah! And I'm going to check my pulse, motory, <laughs> motory. <laughs> <laughs> of the splints out there. In fact, if you get injured, you probably want to use a hair traction splint. So I'll tell EMS, pro EMS providers, use a hair traction splint on me! <laughs> Was that part of the script? No. Hair splash, hair splash. <laughs> <laughs>